This video is part of a project for the Element 14 community, the electronics and engineering community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com, link in the doobly-doo. Greetings programs, Atari here, you there, and have you ever had that feeling where you, you see this beautiful angelic creature and you, you just get a little sweaty in the palms and you just sort of feel all tingly all over? Well, there is actually a name for that, and it's called electrodermal activity, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Hey, baby. If you like making electrical connections and screwing around in the shop, why don't you click that subscribe button? Oh, you click it so well. Go ahead and ring my bell so you don't miss anything. Let's get it on. So there's this phenomena that describes the property of human skin to have this sort of continuous variation in electrical characteristics. And it's been studied for so long, uh, like 170 years-ish. And over the years, it has had all these different names skin conductance, uh, galvanic skin response, or electrodermal response, psychogalvanic reflex, skin conductance response, sympathetic skin response, and skin conductance level. Basically, it all describes this same phenomenon about the electrical conductivity in human skin. And so finally, because everything has to have 80 different names, finally everybody just kind of got together and decided on one standard name. They're going to call it electrodermal activity, or EDA. So the EDA theory states that basically skin resistance varies with the state of the sweat glands in the skin. So sweating is controlled by the sympathetic nervous system, which is part of the autonomic nervous system, which is all the brain functions or nervous system functions that you don't actually think about. And the sympathetic nervous system is basically your fight or flight response. So it's the one that controls like when all the adrenaline gets surged into your bloodstream, your pupils dilate and you get sweaty and you, you're ready to like, you know, take on the world or just run from it, um, which is pretty much me every day. Hashtag anxiety disorder. So the level of skin conductance is sort of a proxy for your level of like physiological or psychological arousal. So the theory states then that if you are aroused, in that certain way, then you are going to be, your sweat glands are going to produce more perspiration and thus you are going to have a higher level of skin conductance. So yeah, that, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Now there's more to it obviously than this, but this is kind of what we're looking at, you know, in the popular science kind of, uh, a breakdown of this phenomenon. phenomenon. In 1849, this guy, Emil Heinrich dubois Lemont, who's German, but I pronounce it with a French accent because Dubois, I, I don't know. Anyway, he is experimenting in his lab and he discovers that when he immerses the limbs of his test subjects in a solution, specifically zinc sulfate, he finds that electric current is flowing from the limb with the muscles contracted to the limb with the ones that are relaxed. Ach, yoika! Uh, there is some kind of musculoskeletal electrical connection going on. He kind of plays with that for a while. Now, flash forward about 30 years, 1878, Switzerland, they figured out that, hey, if you're nervous, you're going to sweat, and sweat causes your body to be more electrically conductive. Then we flash forward another 20 some odd years, and then we've got uh, actual scientific type studies of this 
galvanic skin response. It, Carl Jung actually was talking about this in his Studies in World Analysis book in 1906. He attached electrodes to the palms of his test subjects and then would play like word association with them and then measure their response for arousal. Now, like a hundred years later, we're looking into the 1970s at this point, there's more than 1,500 articles written about what is now collectively referred to as electrodermal activity or EDA. It's becoming kind of a mainstream thing. So what are the problems with measuring electrodermal activity in a scientific capacity? For one, it all depends on A, the person, uh, B, it depends on the environment as well, because you see, this environment is fairly dry, thus I'm not gonna have super um, high EDA kind of response here. It all depends on temperature, it depends on humidity, it, 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 hell, it depends on what the person eats, it depends on if they're taking any sort of medications that messes with their pH levels, their natural like pH levels, if they're a little more acidic or a little more alkaline, uh, that can affect EDA responses. You have a lot of variables that go on, not to mention like the different sides of, like if you put electrodes on my right hand versus my left and you give me different stimuli, one side might be more reactive than the other just because of the part of the brain that controls that response, that particular area. There are so many problems with using this as an end-all, beat-all kind of litmus test, if you will. There's too many false positives that come from studying EDA. Now, we can look at it in context with other things and say, yeah, there's certain trends, but it is not the end-all, beat-all that a lot of people put stock in. Take it for what it is. It is an interesting correlation between stress, sweating, and the electrical conductivity of organic material in the presence of a uh, hypertonic environment, i.e. If you're nervous, if you're aroused, and you sweat, that's an, autom that's an autonomic response, and EDA can show that autonomic response. But it, it can't tell you if somebody loves you. It can't tell you if somebody's lying. It can't tell you anything that a lot of people put a lot of stock and trade in. So with that, be skeptical of things like polygraphs or e-meters or uh, even the love machine. They're fun, they're novel, they are not gospel. If you enjoyed this little dive into electrodermal activity, then go ahead and hit that little like button. If you didn't hit the dislike button, I don't care, doesn't matter to me, lets me know what's going on out there. Over here is the social media where you can connect with me on Twitter and Instagram. Over here is a video that YouTube thinks you will probably enjoy. Subscribe down here. Don't forget to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And show notes for this episode are down here in the corner. My name is Atari, and until next time, tally-ho, y'all.